Live, local, now. This is WSFA 12 News at 10. But we're committed to restoring the infrastructure as needed. That is not going to be an overnight task. Florida's governor reassuring residents tonight help is on the way. Hurricane Ian, one of the strongest in decades, has destroyed property statewide. Good evening, I'm Mark Bullock. And I'm Valerie Lawson. The latest from Florida in a moment, but first, Ian's next move. The storm is expected to make a second U.S. landfall. You can scan this QR code to download the free WSFA First Alert Weather app or search WSFA Weather in your app store. You can track Ian by clicking on the radar, then choosing the tropical overlay to reveal the storm's projected path. Meanwhile, tonight we're getting a clearer picture of the damage left behind in Florida. So far, the death toll there has risen to at least 15. This is a live look over Orlando, which has seen heavy rain and flooding over the last 24 hours. Help is also on the way from electric cooperatives around the state. More than 2 million Floridians are in the dark tonight. Monet Stevens joins us live to continue our Team 12 coverage. 500 Red Cross volunteers are already in Florida tonight. 60 are from the Alabama and Mississippi regions. Mike Brown, director of Red Cross's South Alabama chapter in Mobile, says they spent today setting up long-term shelters for families who have lost everything. Many along the East Coast are preparing for more of Hurricane Ian. Yeah, we're back with Josh in a moment for a detailed look at Ian's projected path, what the storm may bring to the Atlantic coastline next. More than two and a half million customers across Florida are reported to be without electricity tonight. Some counties, including Lee County, have implemented mandatory curfews and encouraged residents to avoid roadways as crews begin to assess the damage. Josh, it sounds like we will be learning for days to come just how bad this storm was. Yeah, and I mean, uh, one thing I would point out, Sanibel Island, Florida, mm -hmm. a very big area, very heavily populated. The causeway out to it is destroyed. Right. There's yeah. no way to get there. Right. Well, that's going to do it for WSFA 12 News at 10 o'clock. More news available at WSFA.com or on our news app. Thanks for watching. This is WSFA 12 News at 6. A new vision for downtown Montgomery. The city and chamber of commerce today released a new point by point plan to grow the economy and increase tourism. The last 20 years have seen considerable growth downtown, but city leaders say more can be done to help Montgomery compete with other southeast tourism destinations. They call it the Envision 2040 plan. WSFA 12 News reporter Ashley Bowerman is breaking it down for us tonight. Ashley, there is a lot to talk about here. Well, some new details tonight from the U.S. military, at least one Alabama military installation is among several in the southeast that will be getting a new name soon. Just hours ago, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin announced the upcoming changes. Now, as you know, the department has been reassessing military base names along with monuments and other paraphernalia that commemorate the Confederacy. Here in Alabama, we've learned that Fort Rucker, named for Confederate General Edmund Rucker, will now be renamed in memory of Chief Warrant Officer Michael J. Novacell Sr., who you see on your screen. Novacell, an Army pilot, was a native of Enterprise and earned the Medal of Honor for his actions in Vietnam. More new information tonight, this from the State Corrections Department, which has been struggling to respond to an inmate work stoppage in recent days. Many inmates stopped performing their assigned jobs in order to protest prison conditions. Now, according to the department, more and more of those inmates are back on the job. Strikes, however, continue at five male prisons across the state. We talked a little bit about tourism at the top of the newscast. That memorial and that museum are a big draw in our city. People come to see it. Mm -hmm. And people are coming from miles around, as they say, to show off at the Alabama National Fair this weekend. Next at 6, how the fair is still in the business of educating youth. Plus, Wetumpka is going pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It is night one of the Alabama National Fair, a nearly 70-year tradition in Montgomery. And the highlight of the first day had to be this. Watch. My co-anchor Sally Pitts is with the sharks. She is in the water, people. I feel great, Mark. I'm not scared at all. It's really cool in here. That's right, our Sally Pitts volunteered to swim with these nurse sharks, which are part of the fair's daily shark encounter shows. It was all broadcast live during our 5 o'clock newscast. The shark encounter is one of many attractions at the fair this year. Here's more from Sally on some of the other big draws. 
Sally showed us a little of that money machine. Take a look. This is Patricia having her turn. She was the winner of our money machine contest here at WSFA 12 <laughs> News. <laughs> she says she walked away with $86 after all of this. Not bad, Patricia. <laughs> if you're headed to the fair, you can register for a chance inside the money machine at Garrett Coliseum. Every time I talk about ASU and I look at Val, I'm yeah, like, I, I shouldn't be talking about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be a good game. And I want to see that ASU stadium sold out because that's a big stadium. Mm -hmm. Huge. There. And you, you can see it driving by on the, the road right there. It's uh -huh. going to be awesome. Yeah. Beaver Athlete of the Week. Those guys. Uh. <laughs> yeah. well, it's like a little more <laughs> I know. Sometimes they get shy and then they get used to the camera. I love watching the presentation though every yeah, week. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks, Rosie. Josh is back for the final check of your forecast after the break. From WSFA 12 News, this is Breaking News. You are watching continuing special coverage of today's visit by President Joe Biden to Alabama. He landed at Maxwell Air Force Base just afternoon and is now in Troy, where he is at Lockheed Martin. The president is getting a tour right now of the Lockheed Martin facility, which has, by the way, produced more than 50,000 of those Javelin missiles since it opened back in the mid-1990s. It also employs approximately 600 people there in Pike County. WSFA 12 News anchor Sally Pitts is joining us live from back location and Sally we talked a little bit about how this event or this visit has been politicized by some no Republicans have decided to join the president for his visit this is a very large campus there in Pike County as Sally mentioned it is in somewhat of a rural area but it consists of 52 buildings and it is not just the javelin anti-tank missile that is produced there there are also other types of missiles that are produced there and it appears as though uh, we're starting to see some activity as the president is expected to make his remarks to the employees of that facility. There's Congresswoman Terry Sewell, Alabama's Democratic member of Congress, who joined the president on his trip. She was actually on Air Force One. Welcome back to the Alabama National Fair, the 69th edition. This fair has been happening in Montgomery since the mid-1950s. There are a lot of issues that we will hear from the Republican supermajority about in this legislative session. Some of those issues are more political in nature. Some of them are issues that will truly affect Alabama citizens. The show starts at 7 o'clock, so Garrett Coliseum is filling up. And there's a little bit of a pre-show event happening right now on the dirt. You can see the kids are participating in what they call a stick horse rodeo. This is the first of a six game homestand. Brendan Porter, the chief operating officer for the Biscuits is joining us and Brendan, we were talking earlier before we went on the air about how happy everyone is here that you guys have now been able to return to what you call normalcy after the pandemic. It was perfect, Valerie. The weather was great. There were fireworks to cap off the evening. The only negative, the biscuits lost. But what everyone was really talking about and really enjoying was being able to get out and get out and about amongst people again to enjoy a night of baseball after the pandemic. We're all vaccinated and boosted and whatever. Biscuits fans say they're glad to be back at the ballpark. It feels good to be back with people and to be watching them again, honestly. It's really nice to have a sense of, I guess, togetherness again. WSFA sports anchors Rosie Langello and Jamal Kennedy were there to throw out the first pitch. This is the first normal Biscuits game since 2019, and there was no shortage of excitement, whether in the stands or on the field. There are plenty of people who follow the action. They come here for the game, but there are lots of other people who just come for the environment, a night out of fun. Uh, part of my job is to make sure that people don't know what the score is, that they've had so much fun, that the baseball is just a little bit of background noise. But of course, yes, we do want the Biscuits to win all the time. But if they don't win, uh, we still need to make sure that people are having a great time when they come to the ballpark. This is the first of a six game homestand and nearly 70 games this season, each with its own special promotions from giveaways and craft beer nights to special themed weekends. We kind of try to tie together every Thursday through Sunday in some way. For example, we have 80s weekend, we have a hero weekend, we have a back to school weekend. To find out what's going on, check the schedule at biscuitsbaseball.com. Whether your goal is to follow the team and its progress or just to get out and enjoy yourself. How's it feel to be out? Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Now, if you are an experienced baseball fan, you're probably asking, what's new this year? Well, there's a lot of new merchandise that we're told is for sale in the biscuit basket, and there's some new food, a few new hot dogs, so look for those at the hot dog cart. And, Valerie, appropriately enough, they are now adding a chicken fried steak biscuit. Well, of course. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Ravello will open soon after a months-long restoration project, one of the most anticipated in downtown. Today, the executive chef invited us inside for a sneak peek. On Commerce Street, the old City Federal Savings and Loan Building, or City Fed for short, is morphing from a financial institution into a culinary destination. We knew downtown needs a new fine dining, you know, uh, establishment. Chef Eric Rivera says he chose the name Ravello's after visiting the town along the Amalfi Coast, and his menu will feature a modern take on traditional Italian favorites. Well, we will have a lot of fresh pasta. It'll all be made here in-house. But getting here was no easy feat. A multi-million dollar historic preservation project presents plenty of challenges. And when you add in pandemic-related shortages of labor and supplies, this project by Vintage Hospitality Group has been delayed by more than six months. You know, you could not have a nail that you specifically need or mortar or cement or uh, wood, for example, and you just kind of have to wait and give it what you can when you can. This is the group's third restaurant in Montgomery. They also own Vintage Cafe and Vintage Year in Old Cloverdale. And soon they'll open a fourth venue just down the street along Alabama's riverfront. Developers purchased the sandbar from the city in Riverfront Park. The plan is to draw visitors to the area, not just with food and drinks, but entertainment as well. The hope is to open in about a month, the same time frame as Ravello's, which also features an adjacent ballroom and meeting space to further complement ongoing downtown development. Those same developers are also leading a project to renovate the old Grove Court apartment building in downtown, which has been abandoned for decades. That project, however, is still in the very early stages. Health inspectors say they found roaches and flies inside a local convenience store kitchen this week, leading to a health score of 78. The 12 News Defenders have the details of this week's inspections. Starting, though, with the highest grades, here's a little food for thought. It's the town of Pike Road's very first Waffle House, a southern breakfast staple. And there's more good news. The restaurant got a high 99 on its first inspection. A 99 also went to Arby's on the Eastern Boulevard. And with 98s this week, Wendy's on Ann Street, Sally T's Cafe and Cupcakes on Atlanta Highway, Josie's Homestyle Cooking and Catering, and Tower Tap Room on Tallapoosa Street in Montgomery's downtown alleyway entertainment district. But AL Wings on Atlanta Highway had a priority item, according to inspectors. Raw chicken wings in the walk-in cooler were being stored at the wrong temperature, lowering the score to an 83. And two convenience stores also got low marks. The Road Runner on Woodley Road with an 83 because chicken in the warmer was at the wrong temperature. And the Quick Serve on Troy Highway got a low 78 because produce was being stored at the wrong temperature and there were roaches and flies in the kitchen, a priority item that many customers will agree is an indication it's time to clean up. By the way, today we learned that inspectors will have two new restaurants to inspect soon. Aronov Realty Management announced that Kava, a Mediterranean restaurant, will move into the old Zoe's location at Zelda Place, and Crumble Cookies is moving into the same shopping center. Both establishments should be open sometime this fall. Coming up next in sports, we wrap up our coverage of SEC Media Days, hearing from the Auburn Tigers about everything from off-season rumors over the coach to the long homestand to start the season. Sports is next. Hey, we've got some breaking news to share with you. Look at these images coming to us from the Waters, a neighborhood in the town of Pike Road. They show a massive house fire earlier this evening. This house, we're told, is on Bright Spot Street. Again, that's in the Waters neighborhood, and as you can tell, it was a large response from firefighters. These images are just into our newsroom a few minutes ago. We also have a crew on the scene there. We did call Pike Road Fire and reached out to the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office to see if we could find out any more information 
information about this fire. Those crews obviously very busy. So far, we have not gotten a response. We do hope to have more information for you tomorrow morning on Today in Alabama. And our own Josh Johnson is here to talk about the weather we've been seeing mar uh, marching through. I'm wondering about the lightning and whether that could have been a, a cause of that fire we saw in the waters. Certainly can't rule it out. And mm -hmm. we've seen, we've heard of a couple of other reports that we're kind of working on right now of fires in and around the river region. So mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. We'll see. We'll let the fire departments do their job. Storm chances linger tomorrow. More on WSFA.com. Thanks for watching tonight.